If you're installing a new wireless network or you're troubleshooting an existing wireless network, you may want to consider performing a site survey. This allows you to better understand how your wireless network may perform, and it might also give you some insights into how other networks around you may be affecting your signal. One of the first steps of a site survey is to get a better understanding of what access points may be currently installed. These may be access points that are part of your network, or it may be access points that are simply located in a close geographical area. Obviously, if there are access points that are outside of your control, then you'll have to configure your access points to work around the existing frequency use. The site survey will detail everything about the current spectrum and give you an idea of what channels might be best for your wireless network. And of course, with technology, things can change quite a bit. So it might be a good idea to perform this site survey on regular intervals. This will give you a chance to see if the access points outside of your control may have changed. And there might be additional access points that might require you to make changes to your existing wireless network. A good way to visualize your wireless network is with a heat map. This is a heat map I took with my network. And you can see the areas where there's more signal have the colors yellow or red. As the signal decreases, you can see that the colors become darker or more bluer. It's sometimes difficult to predict how wireless signals might work in a particular workplace. These heat maps allow you to go from room to room and get an idea of what you might expect with signal strengths on your network. You might also use wireless survey tools to gather more information about the wireless networks around you. This can provide you with a summary of all of the different access points or SSIDs that are in your area. You can see BSSID, channel information, the bands or frequencies that are in use, and other details about the wireless network. This is a good way to determine what access points may have the best coverage for your area, and you can move around to see how these numbers might change. This is also a good way to see what type of interference might be in your area. And if you're trying to track down where problem areas might be on your wireless network, these survey tools can provide you with a great deal of feedback. Our operating systems also include a number of built-in tools for wireless networking. Sometimes this is a separate utility you can run or maybe built into the wireless interface that is currently associated with your connection. There are also a number of third-party tools that you can download. This is a screenshot from NetSpot that I downloaded and ran on my system. And it instantly gave me a list of all of the wireless networks around me, as well as some valuable metrics that can help me understand what access points are close to me, and what access points may be farther away. And if you believe there may be other devices that might be using the same frequencies as your access points, you may want to invest in a spectrum analyzer. This will show you all signals on a particular frequency, whether they originated from an access point or from any other device. Many organizations will manage their mobile devices through the use of a Mobile Device Manager, or MDM. These are especially useful for managing devices that may be owned by the company and also for devices that may be user-owned. Sometimes we refer to these user-owned devices as BYOD, or Bring Your Own Device. An MDM allows the system administrator to manage all of the mobile devices for a particular organization. This means that they can roll out certain policies or require that certain applications are always installed on those devices. It can also be used to set policies on what features of the mobile device may be used. For example, the camera on your phone may be disabled when you're in the corporate headquarters, but when you leave the building, the camera is re-enabled. This also allows the administrator to configure segmentation on your mobile device where a portion of your device is dedicated for business use. This provides a way for you to keep your personal details on this phone, but keep all of that data protected and separate from the business data. From a security perspective, this functionality can provide you with a way to push down security policies. So you may require that all mobile devices have screen locks that are forced on after a certain amount of inactivity. And it may require passwords or personal identification numbers to re-log in to that mobile device. As we mentioned earlier, BYOD stands for Bring Your Own Device. Sometimes you'll hear this referenced as Bring Your Own Technology. This is when an employee brings their personal phone into the workplace to be used both for personal use and for work purposes. 
The challenge, of course, is that these devices have to meet the company requirements so that they can be managed through the mobile device manager. As long as that mobile device is relatively modern, it can be easily managed using your mobile device manager. This is an important step in the process of using a BYOD device because you have to make sure that the user's information remains private and secure, and you also have to make sure that the company information is secure as well. It's also important to set policies and procedures for when these mobile devices change. It's not uncommon for someone to sell or to trade in an older phone when they purchase a new phone. So you have to make sure that the data on the old phone is properly deleted and that the new phone is now integrated into the mobile device manager. Not all organizations require their users to bring in their personal phones. Some organizations rely on COPE. This stands for Corporate Owned personally enabled. This means that the company is purchasing the mobile device and they're assigning it to employees in their organization. This COPE device could exclusively be reserved for corporate use, but many organizations will also enable those devices to be used not only as a corporate mobile device, but also for personal use. This is very similar to the process that many organizations follow for their computers and laptops, where the company will purchase the asset and then assign those assets to the users. As with the bring your own devices, the corporately owned devices are also configured in a similar way where corporate data is partitioned off from any personal data. This allows the administrator to delete one partition on that mobile device without affecting data in any other partition. Some organizations even give you a choice of what device will be assigned to you. We refer to this as Choose Your Own Device, or CYOD. This is still a corporate-owned device, but they give the end user the ability to choose what type of corporate-owned device they would like to receive. Some of the security challenges around mobile phones is that they are very mobile, so they could be located anywhere in the world. They also contain a great deal of data, and they can be easily hidden on someone's person. Our modern cellular networks work on standards such as 4G and 5G, and they're separated out into different areas of geography. We refer to those areas as cells, which is why we refer to these as cell phones. Because we don't have full control of all of the data that is being sent to and from these mobile devices, we have concerns with traffic monitoring or even someone tracking another person's location. Anyone in the world could potentially gain access to these mobile phones, so having a secure device and maintaining updates and patches for those devices is critical for maintaining the security. Wi-Fi devices present similar security concerns. These devices have full access to the Internet, and we have to be concerned about what data is being sent over these wireless frequencies. Ideally, all of the networks we should be connecting to would be encrypted. This isn't always the case when you visit a coffee shop or a hotel, so you have to make sure that you have VPN or some other encryption technology available. Attackers could also be in the same general area as your Wi-Fi device, allowing them to monitor the traffic that's being sent to and from your mobile and Wi-Fi devices. This could also be an opportunity for an attacker to sit in the middle of a conversation using an on-path attack. And if the attacker is in the same general area, they could cause interference over these Wi-Fi frequencies, creating a denial-of-service attack. And, of course, Bluetooth takes advantage of these wireless frequencies to be able to send information over relatively short distances. We sometimes refer to Bluetooth as a PAN, or a personal area network. Connecting our mobile devices to headsets, smartwatches, and other accessories allows us a flexibility without having to use cables to connect everything together. But a device connecting over Bluetooth could gain access to the data that's on your mobile device. That's why there is a formal pairing process whenever you're first connecting to a Bluetooth device. And you should be very careful not to automatically connect to a Bluetooth device, especially if you have no idea where that device might be.